when it comes to four-wheel drive, Jeep provides performance that can't be found anywhere else. For nearly 50 years, Jeep has been getting people where they want to go through some of the toughest driving conditions, whether it's off-road or over the road. Jeep has a track record that has earned the Jeep name a reputation as the world's foremost innovator of four-wheel drive technology. Hello and welcome to this session of Videotech. In this program, we're going to be discussing four-wheel drive. We'll be looking at the 1989 Command Track part-time and Select Track full-time four-wheel drive systems and the three different transfer cases used. We won't be going through overhaul procedures, but we will discuss the operation of each four-wheel drive system and cover some service procedures. The Command Track four-wheel drive system uses the new process gear model 231 transfer case. Command Track is standard equipment on the YJ Jeep Wrangler, the XJ Jeep four-wheel drive Cherokee, and the MJ Jeep four-wheel drive Comanche. The Select Track four wheel drive system, which uses the new process gear model 242 transfer case, is standard on the XJ Jeep Wagoneer Limited, Jeep Cherokee Limited, and optional equipment on the Jeep four wheel drive Cherokee. The Select Track four wheel drive system, which uses the new process gear model 229 transfer case, is the only transfer case available on the SJ Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Let's take a look under a Jeep vehicle and we'll see where the transfer case fits into the drivetrain. The heart of any four-wheel drive system is the transfer case. It is located near the center of the vehicle, behind the transmission. The transfer case transfers engine power from the transmission to the front and rear axles through the propeller shafts. It may transfer power to the rear axle only or to both axles, depending on whether it is in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive mode. Since three different transfer cases are used on Jeep models, it is important to be able to identify which transfer case the vehicle is equipped with. Of course, the Model 231 is the only transfer case on the Wrangler and Comanche, and the Model 229 is the only transfer case on the Grand Wagoneer. The Cherokee Limited and Wagoneer Limited use the Model 242 transfer case, but the Jeep Cherokee may have either the Model 231 part-time transfer case or the Model 242 full-time transfer case. If you're not sure which transfer case you're servicing, you can positively identify the transfer case by the ID tag attached to it on the rear case half near the fill and drain plugs. The ID tag provides the transfer case model number, assembly number, which is the transfer case part number, low range ratio, and serial number. The serial number is actually a date code or build date. For example, the serial number of 9588 would represent a September 5, 1988 build date. Now that we can identify a specific transfer case, it is important to understand the basic difference between them. Command Track uses a part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. Select Track uses a full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. Let's discuss what is meant by part-time and full-time four-wheel drive. In a part-time four-wheel drive system, like the command track system using the Model 231 transfer case or the Model 242 transfer case in the four-wheel drive part-time mode, both front and rear output shafts are locked or undifferentiated and turn at the same speed causing the propeller shafts and axles to also turn at the same speed. Front to rear differences in the turning speed of the wheels are compensated for only through wheel slippage, what is often called crow hop during low speed tight turns. This is why you should never operate a vehicle in part-time four-wheel drive on dry hard surface roads for sustained periods. Using part-time four-wheel drive on such roads will cause stress and possible damage to components as well as make shifting difficult. On a full-time four-wheel drive system, the transfer case sends power flow to the front and rear output shafts through a differential inside the transfer case. This is true of both the Model 242 and Model 229 transfer cases 
in full-time four-wheel drive. The differential allows the front and rear propeller shafts and axles to rotate at different speeds, which is necessary when turning on high traction surfaces. There are two types of differentials used in Jeep transfer cases, an open differential used in the Model 242 transfer case and a limited slip differential used in the Model 229 transfer case. An open differential transfers power to the axle with the least resistance, while a limited slip differential prevents all the torque from going to the axle with the least resistance and continues to transfer power to both axles. Because of the differential in the transfer case, full-time four-wheel drive can be used on any type of road surface without wear or damage to drivetrain components. That describes the difference between part-time and full-time four-wheel drive and how it applies to the different transfer cases. Next, we're going to discuss each transfer case individually, along with the four-wheel drive system in which it is used. We'll start with the command track system, which uses the Model 231 transfer case. The Model 231 transfer case is a part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. It's part of the command track four-wheel drive system, standard on the Cherokee, Comanche, and Wrangler. It features a vacuum actuated front axle disconnect as well as on the fly mode shifting capabilities. The Model 231 transfer case has three operating modes and neutral. Operating positions are two wheel drive high for routine operation on dry pavement or high traction surfaces four-wheel drive high for low traction surfaces such as loose pavement, sand, and gravel, and four-wheel drive low for maximum low speed traction in mud, sand, and deep snow, and for maximum pulling power. A neutral is provided to disengage the axles from the drivetrain for recreational towing. It's important to go through the correct procedure to prepare any Jeep four-wheel drive vehicle if it is to be towed. These procedures are covered in the owner's manual and included in this month's Videotech reference book. If the transfer case is not in the neutral position while being towed, the transmission may be damaged due to lack of oil circulation, and the transfer case could also be damaged. And this is true of all transfer cases. And never park a four-wheel drive vehicle with the transfer case in neutral. The vehicle could roll unexpectedly, even if the automatic transmission is left in park or a manual transmission left in gear. Now, the transfer case can be shifted back and forth from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high while the vehicle is moving at any legal speed. This is called mode shifting. Now, to shift into four-wheel drive low, the vehicle must be slowed to below three miles per hour and the transmission should be in neutral. An instrument panel indicator light located on the dash notifies the driver that four-wheel drive is engaged. On the Cherokee and Comanche, the light will be on when the transfer case is in four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low, and neutral. On the Wrangler, the light is on when the transfer case is in four-wheel drive high and low and often neutral. And the difference is the, due to the location of the vacuum control switch on the transfer case, which affects the operation of the vacuum system, causing the indicator light to operate differently. This will be explained in detail a little bit later. Please remember, now it's necessary for a torque relief to occur before the Model 231 transfer case shifts out of four-wheel drive. A torque relief occurs when the accelerator is quickly released and re-engaged. Now that we understand how a vehicle equipped with the Model 231 transfer case operates, let's describe what's happening inside the transfer case. In two-wheel drive mode, all the input torque is transferred to the rear output shaft at a one-to-one -one ratio. The transfer case is shifted manually from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive by means of a synchronizer assembly. 
This synchronizer assembly allows the transfer case to be shifted from two-wheel drive high to four-wheel drive high at any legal speed. When four-wheel drive is engaged, both front and rear propeller shafts are locked together and turn at the same speed, forming a single driving unit. Since this is part-time four-wheel drive, there is no differential action between front and rear propeller shafts. In four-wheel drive low, power flow is directed through the helical low-range planetary assembly, which reduces the gear ratio to 2.72 to 1. In 1989, two different versions of the Model 231 transfer case are used. The difference is the location of the vacuum control switch, which causes the indicator light to operate differently. On the Model 231 transfer case used in the Wrangler, the vacuum control switch is located on the front of the transfer case and activated by the transfer case sector. When the shift lever is moved from four-wheel drive high to two-wheel drive high, vacuum is released from the four-wheel drive light switch vacuum port, immediately causing the light to go out. But the transfer case does not complete the shift and the front axle disconnect does not disengage until a torque relief occurs in the system. On the Model 231 transfer case used in the Cherokee and Comanche, the vacuum control switch is located on the rear of the transfer case and is activated by the transfer case mode rail. When the shift lever is moved from four-wheel drive high to two-wheel drive, the light stays on until torque relief occurs and the transfer case actually shifts to two-wheel drive, causing vacuum to be released from the four-wheel drive indicator switch port. Another feature of command track four-wheel drive is the vacuum-controlled axle disconnect system. When the transfer case is in two-wheel drive mode, the axle disconnect system disengages the intermediate and outer axle shaft of the right axle. Since the differential equalizes torque between the right and left axle shafts, the release of the intermediate axle shaft allows both front wheels to rotate freely. Disengagement of the intermediate axle shaft also stops the ring and pinion gears of the front axle differential and the front propeller shaft from rotating. With a non-disconnect or conventional axle, the ring and pinion gears and propeller shaft would continue to rotate even though the transfer case is in two-wheel drive mode. When the transfer case is shifted into four-wheel drive, the propeller shaft turns the differential ring and pinion gears which provides torque to the front axle. The vacuum-operated axle disconnect system then engages the intermediate and outer axle shaft to resume front axle operation. The front axle disconnect system is vacuum-operated and consists of a vacuum-controlled axle shift motor mounted on the axle, a vacuum-controlled switch mounted on the transfer case, and a four-wheel drive indicator light that's operated by a vacuum relay switch mounted on the passenger side of the engine compartment in the rear corner. The system also uses two vacuum check valves located in the engine compartment, one near the right front inner fender panel, the other at the rear of the manifold. An air vent filter is located in the engine compartment near the right front inner fender panel. The system is operated through a vacuum source and interconnecting vacuum harness. When the transfer case is shifted from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive position, the plunger of the vacuum control switch is moved so that vacuum is applied to the rear port of the axle shift motor. The front port of the axle shift motor is vented to the atmosphere through the vacuum control switch and air vent filter. With vacuum applied to the rear port of the axle shift motor and atmospheric pressure on the opposite side of the diaphragm, the axle shift motor stem extends moving the shift fork and shift collar into engagement with the intermediate and outer axle shafts for front axle operation. Once the shift motor stem extends fully, vacuum applied to the axle shift motor rear port transfers through to the four-wheel drive indicator switch port. The contacts in the indicator switch close with vacuum applied to the switch, completing the four-wheel drive indicator lamp's electrical circuit to ground. 
When shifted from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, the vacuum control switch routes vacuum from the vacuum source to the front port of the axle shift motor. At the same time, the vacuum control switch opens the line from the rear port of the axle shift motor, venting the rear port and the four-wheel drive indicator switch port to atmosphere through the air vent filter. With vacuum applied to the front port on the axle shift motor and atmospheric pressure acting on the opposite side of the diaphragm, the axle shift motor's stem retracts. This causes the shift fork and shift collar to move outward and out of engagement from the intermediate axle shaft gear. Anytime vacuum is vented from the four-wheel drive indicator switch circuit, the four-wheel drive indicator light is off. That was a description of the command track system using the Model 231 transfer case. Let's now describe the select track system using the Model 242 transfer case. The select track system using the Model 242 transfer case is a full-time, shift-on-the-fly, four-wheel drive system. It's standard on the Cherokee Limited, which you see here, on the Wagoneer Limited, and it's an option on other Cherokee models. The Model 242 transfer case has five positions. Two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high for full-time four-wheel drive in any road surface, part-time four-wheel drive for low traction surfaces, and four-wheel drive low for maximum traction in the most demanding off-road situations. A neutral position is also provided to disengage the transfer case from the drivetrain for recreational towing. The system uses an amber part-time indicator light and a green full-time indicator light. The part-time light is on when the transfer case is in part-time four-wheel drive high and low. The full-time light is on when the transfer case is in four-wheel drive full-time and neutral. Now, neither light is on when the vehicle is in the two-wheel drive mode. The lights are activated by an electrical switch mounted on the back of the transfer case and is controlled by the transfer case mode rail. A vehicle equipped with a Model 242 transfer case does not utilize a vacuum-operated transfer case shift motor or a vacuum-operated front axle disconnect system. That was an explanation of the shift positions and indicator lights for select track with the Model 242 transfer case. Now let's take a brief look at the inside of the Model 242 transfer case. When the transfer case is in two-wheel drive, all the input torque is transferred to the rear output shaft at a one-to-one -one ratio. The differential carrier, sprocket gear, and drive sprocket are not engaged. Torque is not transferred to the front output shaft. Full-time four-wheel drive can be engaged while the vehicle is moving at any legal speed. By using an open differential, the system differentiates between front and rear wheel speed, which allows the vehicle to operate in full-time four-wheel drive, regardless of surface conditions. Torque is automatically distributed by the open differential to the front and rear output shafts as needed. If there is a problem when shifting from four-wheel drive full-time to two-wheel drive, or from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive full-time, check for proper tire pressure, excessive tire wear, tire size variation, different axle ratios, or the possibility of excessive vehicle loading. These symptoms could cause the transfer case to hang up in part-time four-wheel drive because of driveline torque load created when the difference in front and rear propeller shaft speeds exists. Normal transfer case shift procedure includes a momentary torque relief, usually accomplished by at least one release of the accelerator pedal for each transfer case mode change. Therefore, when shifting back and forth from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high full-time, it is usually necessary to release and re-engage the accelerator twice to get through the four-wheel drive high part-time mode. For more information on this condition and possible causes and corrections, 
refer to this month's Videotech reference book. Part-time four-wheel drive high can also be engaged while the vehicle is moving. In part-time four-wheel drive high, the front and rear output shafts are locked together and will evenly split torque to the front and rear propeller shafts. When the transfer case is shifted to four-wheel drive low, torque is routed through the low-range planetary set, which reduces the ratio to 2.72 to 1. When shifting in and out of four-wheel drive low, the vehicle must be slowed to below three miles per hour and the transmission shifted into neutral. As previously mentioned, part-time four-wheel drive high and low should not be used on paved dry surfaces. That was a description of select track four-wheel drive using the Model 242 transfer case. But there is another select track four-wheel drive system used in 1989. Selectrack also uses the Model 229 transfer case in the Grand Wagoneer for full-time, shift-on-the-fly, four-wheel drive. The Model 229 transfer case provides the choice of two-wheel drive or full-time four-wheel drive in the high range, a neutral position, and part-time four-wheel drive in the low range. The Model 229 transfer case uses a manually shifted range lever and vacuum controlled mode selector switch to engage the various transfer case positions. The range lever provides shifting from high to low to neutral. While the mode switch is in the four wheel high position, the transmission is in neutral and the vehicle is moving less than three miles per hour. The vacuum actuated mode switch mounted on the console, allows shifting back and forth from four-wheel drive high to two-wheel drive high when the range lever is in the high range. Four-wheel drive high can be engaged and disengaged at any legal speed and used on any road surface. The system provides an indicator light in the instrument cluster that signals when the vehicle is in four-wheel drive. The indicator light is operated by an electrical switch mounted on the bottom of the rear half of the transfer case. Now, if the indicator light does not illuminate after making a mode shift to four-wheel drive, momentarily release the accelerator pedal. The Model 229 transfer case is equipped with a vacuum motor which provides mode shifting. The vacuum motor is controlled by the mode selector vacuum switch. The vacuum system consists of a vacuum storage tank at the rear of the engine compartment, a check valve located behind the air cleaner assembly, a transfer case shift motor mounted at the transfer case, and interconnecting harness and connectors. When the mode switch is shifted into four-wheel drive, vacuum is applied to the front port of the transfer case shift motor, retracting the shift motor's stem and shifting the transfer case to four-wheel drive high. When the mode selector is shifted to two-wheel drive, vacuum from the reservoir is applied to the rear port of the transfer case shift motor. Atmospheric pressure acts on the opposite side of the shift motor diaphragm and causes the shift motor stem to extend, shifting the transfer case to two-wheel drive high. If the transfer case will not shift into two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive mode, Check for vacuum leaks in the harness, connecting lines, or tank. Also, test the transfer case shift motor using the instructions provided in Section 21 of the Jeep Engine Body Chassis Service Manual. Consult the diagnosis chart for the Model 229 transfer case for additional causes. The Model 229 transfer case is equipped with a sealed viscous drive controlled limited slip differential to provide limited slip between the front and rear axles. During straight ahead driving in four wheel drive, the differential divides torque equally between the front and rear output shafts. However, if one of the axles begins to slip and tries to rotate quickly, the viscous coupling prevents all the torque from going to the spinning axle. The non-serviceable viscous coupling consists of an enclosed housing containing two sets of fixed clutch plates and a special silicone fluid. 
The differential pinion gears are located in the open center section of the coupling. Under normal road conditions, the coupling does not transfer torque. However, when speed variations between axles occur, the coupling acts to transfer torque to the axle having the greatest traction. During torque transfer, the coupling does not lock the axles together to produce undifferentiated four-wheel drive. The coupling merely limits the amount of slippage while delivering torque to the axle having the greatest traction. An explanation of power flow for the Model 229 transfer case, as well as the other two transfer cases, is included in this month's Videotech reference book. That wraps up the discussion of the operation of the three four-wheel drive systems. Now, let's discuss some of the servicing procedures on the command track and select track systems. In this segment, we'll cover some general servicing information, perform an axle shift motor function test, and shift lever adjustment on a command track four-wheel drive system. And we'll also describe a mode rod adjustment on a Model 229 transfer case. When servicing four-wheel drive, use the diagnosis charts provided in Section 21, the transmission section of the Jeep Engine, Chassis, and Body Service Manual. Once the condition is determined, the diagnosis chart can help you to determine the possible cause and correction. One of the first things to check when servicing a transfer case is for proper lubrication. In order to operate properly, all transfer cases must use the proper type and quantity of lubricant. Mopar Mercon or Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid are recommended for all Jeep transfer cases. It's red in color and thinner in viscosity than motor oil. If you're not sure that the transfer case contains the proper fluid, drain and refill with Mopar Mercon or Dexron 2 transmission fluid. The correct fill level is to the bottom of the fill plug hole when the vehicle is level. Proper lubricant capacities are provided in the vehicle owner's manual and in this month's Videotech reference book. It's important to verify a customer's four-wheel drive complaint before any work is done on the transfer case. And in some cases, lack of understanding of four-wheel drive operation may lead to the complaint, not a faulty transfer case or system. In many cases, it'll be necessary to drive the vehicle to determine if the four-wheel drive system is working properly. Testing a four-wheel drive system on a hoist is not recommended, nor is it a reliable test because of the difference in operation of the three transfer cases and other variables that can influence the operation of a four-wheel drive drivetrain. And the transfer case may also be damaged by shifting it while the vehicle is running on a hoist. If you're not familiar with your dealership's procedure for testing four-wheel drive, check with your service manager. If the command track axle disconnect system is not working properly, check for vacuum at the vacuum lines connected to the axle shift motor. With the engine running and the transfer case in two-wheel drive, vacuum should be present at the line to the front port. In four-wheel drive, vacuum should be present at the line to the rear port of the axle shift motor. Now, if no vacuum is present in either case, check the vacuum harness, switch, the motor, and the connectors for leaks or bad connections. Another problem could be a bad vacuum control switch. To test it, remove it from the transfer case. Now check to make sure the plunger moves in and out. The plunger may become stuck inside the switch and not permit the transfer case to shift from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive. If the vacuum system and the vacuum control switch are working properly, test the axle shift motor to be sure it's functioning properly. To test the axle shift motor, you'll need a vacuum gauge. First, disconnect the vacuum harness from the axle shift motor and connect the vacuum gauge to the vacuum shift motor's front port. Apply 15 inches of vacuum to the front port 
and rotate the right wheel to fully disengage the outer and intermediate axle shaft. The axle is now in the two-wheel drive mode. The shift motor should maintain that vacuum applied to the front port for a minimum of 30 seconds. If the motor does not maintain that vacuum, replace it. Disconnect the vacuum pump from the front port and connect it to the rear port. Also, cap the port for the indicator lamp switch and apply 15 inches of vacuum to the rear port. Once again, the shift motor should maintain that vacuum for a minimum of 30 seconds. If the shift motor doesn't maintain that vacuum, once again, replace it. Now, remove the cap from the port for the indicator lamp switch and determine if vacuum was present at this port. If you hear a hiss, this indicates that vacuum is present, and if vacuum was present, the shift motor functions normally. Now replace the cap and apply 15 inches of vacuum to the rear port once again. Rotate the right front wheel to ensure the outer and intermediate axle shafts are completely engaged. Both front wheels should move. The axle shaft must be completely engaged to open the port for the indicator lamp switch. Now determine if vacuum is present at the port for the indicator lamp switch again. If vacuum was present at this port, the shift motor functions normally. If vacuum was not present at the port, replace the shift motor. Now, if the shift motor is not the problem, use the diagnosis chart for the Model 231 transfer case for further diagnosis. The chart is located in the Jeep Service Manual, Section 21. If the transfer case is not shifting properly, shift linkage adjustment may correct the problem. Although there are minor differences in the adjustment procedure for different vehicles, the procedure is basically the same. We'll go through the adjustment procedure on this Jeep Cherokee with the Model 231 transfer case. The adjustment procedure for this vehicle and others is included in Section 21 of the Jeep Service Manual. In order to adjust the shift linkage, Remove the shift lever bezel and move the shift lever into four-wheel drive low position. Insert a four millimeter spacer between the shifter and the forward edge of the shift lever gate. Now secure the lever and spacer in place with tape or wire. Now raise the vehicle. Loosen the lock bolt on the adjusting trunnion. The linkage rod should now slide freely in the trunnion. Verify that the range lever is in the four-wheel drive low position. In the XJ Cherokee, the range lever should be straight down and closest to the case. Position the linkage rod so it's a free fit in the trunnion. Then, tighten the trunnion lock nut to the proper torque specification. The shift linkage is now properly adjusted. You can now lower the vehicle, remove the shift lever spacer, and install the bezel. The Model 229 transfer case has both a range lever and a mode lever. Now we've just provided an example of the shift linkage adjustment on a 231 transfer case, which is similar to the range lever adjustment on the Model 229 transfer case. Now, if the range lever on the Model 229 transfer case needs adjustment, be sure to follow the instructions, Section 21 of the Jeep Service Manual. The mode lever is located next to the range lever on the Model 229 transfer case. If it's out of adjustment, the transfer case will not shift properly from the two-wheel drive to the four-wheel drive mode. Now, with the transfer case in the two-wheel drive high range, both the mode lever and the range lever must be aligned on the same center line before the mode rod adjustment can be made. If the levers are not properly aligned prior to rod adjustment, the transfer case may not fully engage in two-wheel drive high range 
and the transfer case viscous coupling may be damaged. To position the mode lever in the two-wheel drive high position, it may be necessary to rotate the transfer case output shaft, rotate the rear axle or prop shaft while applying a load on the mode lever to fully engage the transfer case in the two-wheel drive high range. This procedure helps achieve the spline alignment necessary for complete engagement. Adjust the mode rod to approximately 5 and 29 30 seconds of an inch, as shown in the diagram, to eliminate free play. Following a mode rod adjustment, check the position of the range lever inside the vehicle. The range lever should be positioned one half to one inch above the floor when the lever is in the two-wheel drive high range. Any adjustments should be made at the transfer case end of the linkage. In this session of Video Tech, we have described the command track and select track four-wheel drive systems, explained how they are different from each other, and described how they operate. We've also provided some tips on diagnosing and servicing four-wheel drive systems. Additional information is provided in this month's Video Tech reference book. Please study the reference book and use it in addition to the service manual when servicing four-wheel drive systems. Well, that wraps up this session of Video Tech. Be sure to watch for the next Video Tech, which will provide you with more information on Jeep and Eagle vehicles.